Greetings. This is your second lecture on the words gnosko and gnosis. And here we're going to take an example of the words used in First Clement's letter to the Corinthians. Now, this letter was written by the Ro Roman bishops to the Corinthians after they've had another fight. You remember that in First and Second Corinthians, there are examples of Paul correcting the Corinthians for their disagreements. In this one, the church has actually split into two places. A younger set of elders picked up and went to another church, uh, church meaning someone's house from another house. So let's, the Romans were troubled because it had... In 90 AD, the Roman Empire was extremely afraid of Jewish or anything that came from Jewish backgrounds, such as Christians, having fights and having to put down another widespread rebellion. So it's a dangerous thing. If they fight, the Romans may come in, put them all into the arena and kill them. So let's dig into what it says. Now, the first thing is this occurs, the writing probably occurs between 95, 110 CE. Let's assume 95 and we're about the same time as John. Now, Clement starts out by complimenting their original state, their beautiful knowledge. And that is the before. We'll talk about the after and how we ask them to fix it. Now, Clement traveled with Paul, he probably learned as a disciple of Christ under Paul's background. Here's his first statement as the writer of the Roman bishops, uh, the bishops that is in Rome, in the house churches probably. For who has ever visited and not approved of your highly virtual and stable faith, who has not been established by your temperate and gentle piety of Christ and not proclaim the mischaracter of your hospitality and not uttered a blessing for your perfect and unwavering knowledge. Here we have unwavering knowledge. For you heeded his, that is Christ's word, carefully storing them up in your inner self. His sufferings were ever present before your eyes. And for this reason, a deep and rich peace was given to you all along with an insatiable desire for doing good and a full outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Clement contrasts this with their current state, which is a split in the Corinthian church. Every kind of honor and happiness was bestowed upon you, and then was fulfilled that which is written. My beloved did eat and kick and was enlarged and became fat and kicked. And this is an image from Deuteronomy, from Moses' song, which talks about the rebellion in Israel. A harsh contrast. Now, Clement contrasts this with perfect knowledge. From this came jealousy and envy, strife and faction, persecution and disorderliness, war and captivity. And the dishonorable rose up against the honorable, the disreputable against the reputable, the senseless against the sensible, and the young against the elders. So script. Clement decides that the best thing he can do is first compare them with scripture and then directly tell them how to fix their split. So he first starts with the glory of God and the heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament proclaims his handiwork. One day utters a word to another. Night proclaims knowledge. That is the knowledge, the depth, the relationship to another. Knowledge grows on knowledge. Relationship of God grows in relationship. And this is the path, beloved, in which we found our salvation. Jesus Christ, the high priest of our offering, the benefactor who helps us in our weakness. Through this one, we gaze into the heights of heaven. Through this one, we see the reflection of his perfection and superior continence. Through this one, the eyes of our heart have been opened. Through this one, our foolish and darkened understanding spring into the light. Through this one, the master, he wished us to taste the knowledge of 
immorality. He is the radiance of our magnificence. So he takes that Greek knowledge and he talks about forming that knowledge based on Christ, just as the Corinthians used to. So when he puts the focus on Jesus, he crowns him with the very royal Psalms. This is the one, and he talks about, who makes angels as spirits and his ministers a tongue of fire. And he says about the Son, different from what God speaks to on angels. For you are my son, today I've given you Ruth. Ask me and I will give you nations as your inheritance and the ends of the earth as your possession. And he says again, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool. Who are these enemies? Clement asked, those who are evil and oppose his will. So notice Clement is coming right to the end. He's coming from the Psalms of Jesus, which they spoke about in the New Testament church, right into a resolution. So first, Clement calls for a resolution of the spit using knowledge. Since these matters have been clarified for us in advance, and we have gazed into the depths of divine knowledge, we should do everything as the, mas the master has commanded us and perform in an orderly way in appointed times, not in a, quote unquote in the background, he might say on the side, not having a schism. Second, Clement links knowledge to change behavior. Knowledge calls for a resolution of the split. You see, brothers, the more knowledge we have been deemed worthy to receive, the more we are subject to danger. Let a person be faithful. Let him be able to speak for knowledge. Let him be wise in discernment of the words and pure in deeds. Notice he links knowledge to deeds. When we have knowledge, we must live according to it. We must be subject to it. Now, Clement also, like John, links knowledge to perfection in love. Love has no schism. Love lives in harmony. The one who experiences love in Christ should do what Christ commanded. Who can explain the bond of God's love? Love binds us to God. Love hides a multitude of sins. Love bears all things, endures all things. There is nothing vulgar in love, nothing in hearty. Love has no schism. Love creates no faction. Love does all things in harmony. Everyone chosen by God has been perfected in love, and apart from love, nothing is pleasing. It sounds like First John when we get there. It sounds like Corinthians 13. No wonder these gentlemen talked to one another. They served with one another. Clement also says the world is watching you. Splits put the church at peril. Love and harmony shows Christ. Perhaps we need to live this today. And I pray even for my own church, the United Methodist Church, that that should be true. If, however, anyone should disobey the words spoken by him through us, let us know that they will indulge themselves in transgression and serious danger. He is warning them because the danger at that time is real. Let all nations know you. Notice, see your obedience, see your character, see your reality, that you alone are God, that... Jesus Christ is your child, and we are your people and the sheep of your pastage. No obedience. So I hope this second look at knowledge and what the New Testament means by knowledge is helpful to you. May God's grace grow in us. May God's knowledge grow in us, and may we come to see him in that perfect knowledge. Amen.